in Brownsburg, Indiana, just west of Indianapolis, across the street from the giant of Don Schumacher Racing, and in the back of a series of gray buildings, you're going to find the little shop of Lex June Racing. Let's go in and chat with and see what the Flying Dutchman is working with next on Monday Morning Racer. <laughs> So, Monday Morning Racer here in the Lex June Racing Shop. Got Lex in front of us. Lex, look, tell me about this particular arrangement you've got with this shop, where you're at, why you are in Brownsburg, Indiana. Well, Brownsburg, Indiana, you already gave it away, right? So, uh, well, there are a couple of reasons to be here. Um, the weather is great during the summer and in the winter. Now, the reason is that a lot of the big teams are situated here, so that's easier for us because we, it's, it's, sometimes you can just walk to the other side of the street, there's Don Schumacher Racing or John Force Racing or uh, Pedregon is here, uh, uh, all, the, all the, the, the big teams are here, so uh, what happens is a lot of industry will come here as well, like uh, Morgan Lucas is making chassis, you know, there, there are many factors here, so uh, excess on parts, it's, 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 it's good. The main reason why the teams are here and at the end of the day we are here is a lot of the races on the NHRA schedule, uh, you can go there traveling within a day. <coughs> so that will save you a lot on, on hotels and everything else. Uh, plus, uh, you know, uh, fuel cost and, and everything that comes with it. That's why basically uh, the big team started here in Brownsburg. Uh, Indianapolis, uh, race capital of the world, part of it, but the main thing is traveling. Uh, the, 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 the traveling part of it makes it like th this is where we want to go. Awesome. So, you know, your shop is on the back side across the street from Don Schumacher Racing. Tell me about the square footage of this shop you've got and what it's been like working in and out of it and maybe some aspirations that you have for another shop or is this it? Is this good enough? Uh, it, it's good enough. It's it's thousand uh, feet, so it's not really big, but the, the race car fits in here. Uh, we got enough room to to get our parts and, and everything situated. Uh, there is a heater in here, so uh, we, you know, it's all it's all here. We got a small office, so if we need to talk to business, we can do it. Um, <clears throat> the rent is not really like uh, you know. It's doable. Uh, Gerd and I just basically started here and, and we did it from our paychecks. And we still do. Sure, we got some, some, some deals going now. We got partners coming on board, which is awesome. We say every dollar helps. But we, you know, you only can do it like I always say, you need to, to keep the string alive. If it's gonna break because you cannot pay your rent anymore or, or you cannot pay your parts or you cannot pay the nitro or whatever, then it's over and we are not the type of team that are just here to do a couple of races at the end of the day we are here to do every race in the schedule so like what happened this year we did 12 races beginning of the year going to the Gator Nationals we didn't know how many races we would do it's just you know we start here and then let's see how many we can do we did four in a row that's something I wanted to do, you know, I at least want to have that's something on my bucket list. I want to do it, so we did it. So we ended up with 12 races. You only can do it when you don't have to spend a huge amount of money on rent. Because rent, yeah, you know, we need to have a place to put it, but that's it. So that's why it's only 1,000 feet, but it's, it's, it's great. It's good enough for us. It's, it's doing everything it needs to do. Sure, I would lo love to have the trailer inside for more than one reason, but it's sitting outside now and, and, and okay, you know. It's cold outside. We need to get all our stuff and parts out of it because A, you don't want to run up and down all the time and B, you know, it's safe and, and, and okay here. Yeah, it, it, is, it is what it is. But you know what? When we go back racing in a couple of uh, months or maybe a couple of weeks, whatever, you know, it doesn't really matter because the race car is on the racetrack and when it's on the racetrack, it doesn't know anything about a shop or a trailer. It's about 
making the run, get the car qualified, and go around. Definitely. Now, speaking of the race car, uh, tell me about your particular top field dragster. What year is it? Who's the chassis builder? Also, looking forward to 2020, and I regularly see you posting on social media, what are some of the hopes and dreams with this car and its combination for 2020? Well, the, the, it's basically a 1999 McKinney. So it's an older car, it's basically 20 years old. Uh, what happens, and most, most people know this, uh, certain, you know, it's only an X amount of runs you put on the front half, and then an X amount of runs you put on the back half, and then it's going to be replaced. So the front half is done early last year, so that's almost brand new. Uh, the back half is done not so long ago, so basically this part of, of the race car is 99. But that's how things work, it's a 99 and it's a McKinney. Uh, I must say with the new front half on it, it's, it's working really nice. It's, it's, the traction is there, the car is reacting, it's steering, it's, it's, it's doing basically everything a car needs to do. So for that I'm really happy with what we got going right now. Um, uh, halfway this season we changed the whole engine program, we changed the clutch, uh, we changed the supercharger, uh, we changed the fuel pump, basically we started all over again, uh, which, you know, basically get, this car can run 370s without any issue. Uh, but saying that, it had an issue the last time we ran it in Charlotte, it broke uh, an idle gear in, in the engine. So what that did is, uh, between the crankshaft and the camshaft, there is a, a gear that connects the whole deal together, and that gear broke. So what happened then is the camshaft stops running, it's got out of time, so it blew the whole engine apart. And yeah, for us type of teams, that's, that's, that's pretty devastating because, you know, a, a bill of 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars to repair the whole thing, it, it's a lot. So, uh, but you know, it's, it's live and learn. Uh, the potential of this car, it can be qualified every race we go. Uh, and it can go rounds. And depending a little bit on circumstances, yeah, sure, if you got the same deal with what we had here in Indy this year, where, you know, no matter what you do, you cannot go wrong as long as you put enough in it, then, yeah, you know, it might be. But then still, because I don't want to break anything. But we can run, I believe this car can run. In, in, in a given conditions, high 370s the whole day, and I believe you can qualify in every race and, and, and then see what we can do. Funding is an important thing, but even you know with, with the deals we got going right now, I know we can have a lot of fun. So when you're in the Lex June racing shop, you're going to see a lot of photos of the cars that he's driven in the past, and a lot of people, Lex, might not know, and I want to give the opportunity, you're a champion, you're a winner in other parts of the world, and now you're attempting to do it here in NHRA drag racing in the States. So give me a rundown of what you have accomplished and where you've been, and I know Gerda just mentioned you've been on stage with some other famous names in the world of motorsports, so clue us in. No, people know about the Monaco, right? Uh, if if you run in Europe, like in in top fuel, you run under under the FIA banner, which is also Formula One. So when we won a championship in '05, we had to go to Monaco to pick up our uh, hardware, and there you are, you know, in the middle of uh, F1 uh, champions and and everybody that's that's taking part of an FIA championship. So. Yeah, that's what we what we have done. We we set records in most places, most racetracks. You know, we've set records. We basically won on every racetrack there is. Um, so for that, yeah, we did a lot. Uh, and for me, it started in the 80s with a bit a bit of Camaro. I, I I just found that at a farmer's place, he didn't do anything with it. 68 Camaro. It had a 
a, a six cylinder long block in it and the first thing I did is took the block out put a V8 in it a big block and we start racing and, and, and there was no drag racing in the Netherlands uh, there was only uh, some bikes that did some racing uh, and once a year they, they were drag racing so uh, we asked with a couple of friends uh, can we compete with you guys yeah sure so that's how we started and and certain point I saw funny cars and I thought that's really cool and I was working towards the fact that certain point for sure I were, was able to, to buy an alcohol funny car and start running a funny car the guy I bought it from had no clue how things work so you had to figure it out yourself no computers nothing but we got it done and and you know you go from there and uh, certain point uh, yeah you, you you got an opportunity to to buy a fuel funny car and that's what we did and that's what almost killed me because yeah you know I love Europe but safety wise running a funny car a fuel funny car that didn't really work out we had a a fire it, it was pretty bad lost the car almost lost my life so uh, Curtis said uh, that's not gonna happen again and uh, well the, the biggest thing is that uh, from a, a business point of view it was really hard to find sponsors for uh, uh, fuel funny cars because it was not an FIA approved series so uh, that's how we ended up in in, in a top fuel and uh, and and I'm not really a drag guy to be honest and I hope one day I'm able to start running uh, fuel funny cars again. But right now, with, with the budget we have, it's it's smarter to run a, a dragster because uh, uh, you know when you blow a body off a funny car, it's a, it's a lot of money. Uh, I, I'm not really concerned about safety because the safety safari or they, they are awesome. Uh, I believe they they will get you out of anything and everything. So, but it's more from a business point of view. Uh, and you know the other fact is it gives me a lot of time to learn everything about nitro tuning cars and everything I need to know But uh, yeah, you know uh, for me uh, my career in uh, drag racing started uh, I think in 86 or 87 So uh, I'm, I'm doing this for a couple of years. I'm pretty successful. Definitely been around the block. Yep Now Gerda, what about yourself? How did you get bit by this drag racing bug and get involved with all this? Well, we had a small local airfield in the town where I grew up and uh, a friend of mine was working at that racetrack because they converted that airfield to a drag strip once a year at that time. And they needed people to sell tickets at the gate. So I started selling tickets at the gate. I had no idea what was going on at, at the strip itself. Then after that, I started doing racing secretary. I made sure all the invitations were done and I got the people all the tickets and I was just fascinated by A, the noise that it makes, and B, the speed that it has. And at a certain point, they invited me, a race team invited me to uh, go with them to Hockenheim, because that was the biggest event of the, of the season, and that's where I ran into him. And it's, it's history-making ever since, so. and, and you're, still, you're still regularly tuning and wrenching on this car. You play an active part in the weekend. Would you give a rundown of what your roles are with the team? Well, the shortcut is I do everything except drive the car. <laughs> um, I wrench on the car, I make sure, I, I do a lot in preparations already here in the shop and at home and make sure all the paperwork gets done, uh, make sure the trailer is ready to go, make sure the parts are all in there. Um, in the race weekend itself, I, I help now with our consultant Lance Larson in our race team. I am next to him, writing down all the numbers, uh, what goes into the race car, talk about tune-ups. Um, during the servers, I'll do the rods, pistons, uh, I check the lifters, I, I they do the data on the computers. I, if there's changes to be made, we'll make them, uh, whether Lance does it or I do it. So it's a lot of numbers, and I'm really a numbers person, I love numbers. Um, at the start line, I fire up the race car, set the idle, uh, do all that stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot going on. I always say uh, a race weekend is like a roller coaster. You get into it, and the roller coaster doesn't stop until Monday night when you're back home. Definitely. Yeah. Now, back home is the Netherlands, correct? Yes. No. 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 Home is here. Back home is here. Back home is here. Yes. We were born in the Netherlands. This born in the home. Netherlands. Home's here now. Yeah. Yep. So, I'm curious. That transition from Europe to America... Uh, first, 
What here in the States have you come to love as far as food? What, a part, what about American food culture have you just come to love and you're, you wish you always had it throughout your whole life? Apple pie. Apple pie. Apple pie. Hey. I love apple pie, especially when it's a little warm. And tacos. Tacos. And, and what about wings? Yeah. Oh, wings. I love wings. I, that's a good combination. With barbecue sauce. That's a good combination. Wings, yeah. apple pie, and tacos. Yeah. That's, that's about as good as it yeah. can get. You can Definitely. wake me up for that anytime. Definitely. <laughs> so what is it that you miss from the Netherlands, from Europe, that you cannot find, can't acquire here in the States? Uh, I miss the big lumps of cheese that we have in the Netherlands. Uh, some food, but that's more like spices. And what I do a lot is the, the stuff that I really miss. I Google a recipe on the internet. I found a Dutch store in Michigan where I can order spices and condiments and I'll just make the recipe myself. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So, uh, 2020, just around the corner. And I know you still got strutmasters.com on board. You're gonna be playing a big part. Yes. You also have, you're looking for other people to come on board, so folks, if you're looking for a top fuel team to be a part of, Lex June is your man. Uh, any, anything else that you might want to share with us concerning 2020 and uh, who you might have possibly coming on board or what you can offer for someone to come on that they might jump on board and help you out through the year? Well, uh, you know, with Threadmasters on board, it's, that's pretty cool. But, uh, you know, it's basically an associated sponsor, so he will give us an opportunity to go to an X amount of races. But at the end of the day, you want to do them all. And, you know, if you look at my career, I'm here to, to again, run for a championship. I've been, championship I, I've been a champion in everything I did. Now, I know I'm always raising the bar, and to come here is basically as high as it can be there's there's no other championship in the world that is uh, as strong as good as nhra drag racing so and i'm not saying i need the money those big teams are, are looking for but at the end of the day there needs to be an x amount to make it happen because those cars a lot of people say they run on money and that's for sure you know uh, an, an average run Without breaking parts, it's four or five thousand dollars. Well, we are basically still running from a paycheck. Sure, with help from from Chip Lofton, Strutmasters is awesome, and we are talking to some other potential people that want to come on board. Um, but at the end of the day, yeah, you know, if we really want to do this, then uh, we need to have more partners, as we call it. We don't talk about sponsors; we talk about partners because at the end of the day, if 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 companies start to invest in us, we need to give back. It's about the return on their investment. So, you know, we dedicated basically the rest of our life to do this. We came here, as I, we just said, this is our home now. We won't go back anymore. So if people start investing in us, if companies start investing in us, they don't have to be afraid we go back because... We won't. We won't. Even if we won't raise anymore. If, if, if they ban Nitro tomorrow, we still will be here and do other stuff because you know what, this is the greatest country in the world. Uh, even before we had an opportunity to, to come here, we always talked about America because that's who we are. Uh, so if, if there are companies out there that want to give us an opportunity to work together, we will, we will give them more than they ever dreamt of that would be possible. But it needs to happen, so we plug away on it and uh, uh, we have a plan that to at least to run between 12 and 15 races in 2020 and hopefully more and hey you know what if we can sign the deal tomorrow we will run them all 24 and, and we're going to make the, the countdown that's for sure and i think one of our strengths is because we raced in europe we always had to get our parts from the us it's not that you can buy nitro parts over there so we always had to make a lot out of nothing because we only had so much availability. If, if you need rear tires, we would order a set of rear tires. We could not pick or choose what size. We just had to deal with what was sent to us, which nine out of 10 were the leftovers from the NHRA. Uh, the tires became double the price because the shipping was ridiculous. 
So we, were, we took care of our tires. Uh, we took care of all our parts. I had a crank at a certain point in my car that had 43 runs on it. And I, like, I had, why not? right, <laughs> I had a challenge, I wish I could challenge one of the NHRA team to swap one weekend with us. See if they want to race the way we race and then see what they think. I think if you would ask man to man, would you do it the way they are doing it, that 99% would say no. And I think that's a big opportunity for a company because we represent, we, we are racing. We will move heaven and earth to give that company what they were looking for. And that's where the never quit attitude comes from. We won't give up. No. We will get it done. And, 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 and you know, sometimes you really look at yourself or in the mirror and think, really, do, do I really want to do this? Yes. yes. <laughs> it needs to happen. Yeah. Well, there it is, the hard yes and the never quit attitude as you've got uh, stickered and placard on your race team that you're never going to quit. You're going to keep chasing this dream. And I hope the dream comes true. And I hope in a couple of years I'm back here and it's a bigger shop and we're filming this again. And we've seen a great successful story and keep adding to it. So, uh, Lex, Gerda, thank you for your time and the best to you in 2020. Thank, thank you. you. For, thank you for having us. Yeah. It's, a, it's a great um, opportunity. Thank you. And I know the fans will love this. So thank you. Thank you for everything you do. I love your videos. That is heart and soul right there.